Greetings, my name is Cosmic and welcome back to my channel. Today I am bringing you part 4 of my series of guides showing you how to build a historically inspired castle in Minecraft. We are almost done building Castle Caramel. The last main structure we have to build is the Donjon. The Donjon roughly translates to Great Tower and is the tallest tower of the castle. It granted people the greatest view of the surrounding area and could give the most advanced warning of incoming attackers. The highest room of the dungeon will sometimes turn into a luxurious solar or other lounging room because of the stunning views from this tower. Other times, the highest room was used to imprison people because it was the hardest room to escape from in a castle, prior to building prisons underground. Thus, the word dungeon would evolve into the word dungeon. Here is the layout of the castle. As you can see, the castle is really starting to take shape. I'll be using the supplementaries mod very sparingly this time around. And once again, here we are, quote, live, ready to build the donjon of this castle. Now, once again, I've laid out the, the blueprints of the donjon using uh, colored concrete. Just like the uh, other towers of this castle, the, the base of the donjon will be wider and flared out to help, you know, in real life, a wider footprint of the uh, dungeon, of the tower would allow for more ground to support the weight of the tower and therefore it won't sink into the ground as much. As you may have noticed, the uh, donjon does share some blocks with the keep. Uh, this won't affect the main build of the keep, but the flared out base will be merged with the main structure of the keep. And actually, later on, we will remove some of these battlements to make room for the walls of the donjon, which is perfectly okay. First of all, we're gonna take polished andesite blocks and we're going to play, we're going to build up pillars of polished andesite on these inside uh, circle of white concrete blocks. And, and we're actually going to build up the polished andesite pillars to 28 blocks tall. As I described earlier, the donjon will be the tallest tower of the castle. So just bear with me for a moment as I build up these and polished andesite pillars. Alright, we built up the polished andesite blocks, 28 blocks high. Now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to build the flared out base. And the flared out base is going to be 8 blocks tall, including the stair that caps it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 as such. And then we'll do the same thing, fill in between the polished andesite with stone bricks and stone brick stairs. And what I actually like to do in these uh, corner spot is build up three stone bricks and then a couple of polished andesite to three more. And then polished andesite stairs to cap it off, just to give a little bit of variation in the detail in the corners of the donjon. Of course, here will be a doorway to get into the donjon. And then on the inside walls of the donjon, we're going to take stone bricks and just cover up the, these markers with the stone bricks, basically just filling up the walls all the way up to the eight block mark where the flared out base ends. Now we're going to replace the entire floor of the donjon with deep slate tile slabs. And I think what we're going to do next is build up the rest of the walls of the donjon. So on the two walls facing the inside of the castle, this wall and this wall, there's going to be blank stone bricks and the two walls facing the outside of the castle this wall and this wall will be 
uh, filled with arrow slits. That way, defenders can attack any invaders, and if it, somehow attackers got into the donjon, they wouldn't be able to use the donjon against the rest of the castle. So for the arrow slits, they're built just like before with the polished inside stairs. As such and then there will be two rows of stone bricks right above and then you can put in another set of another set of arrow slits and then once again for the uh, corners in between the walls we're going to do the same method as we did before, where it's going to be one, two, three stone bricks, and then polish andesite all the way up. Alrighty, I know that was a lot of time lapses and cut footage, but we're almost done with the main structure of the donjon. Next, what you can do, well, I guess we can just put a spruce door right in there. And then we want to, we're going to build the spiral staircase that will get you all the way up to the tower and each individual floor of the tower, which I believe there are seven floors to this. So I'm going to put strip spruce logs right in the middle and build it all the way up to the top. And one extra right on top. And the next, we're going to place spruce stairs all on all sides in a spiral formation the next we're going to do is take spruce slabs and put it on the front of each stair so that you can safely walk all the way up and then to build the each individual floor of the tower we're going to count one two three four oops up on each on each wall and then we're going to actually these uh, logs are going to be too long they're going to basically support the floor and then we can fill in the space in between with spruce slabs leaving enough room so that uh, you can walk through don't completely close off the space. Make sure that there's ample room for you to walk up and down. And I just realized this is going to get really dark really quick. So what I might actually do... Well, this is going to be the method to build the floors for each story of this tower. You're going to count up to the fourth block up from the floor. And that is how the floors of this tower will be built. I'll finish that later. I'm actually going to go right now and fill up or decorate the interior of this very bottom floor, which will be another barracks room, much like the room that was in the keep. Alrighty, now I've got changed up my hot bar with some items to decorate this interior. What we're going to do first is take sconces uh, if you have supplementaries. If you only have, if you're not using supplementaries and then you can just use torches. And I just thought of this. Maybe I want torches to not be right up against the wood where you can maybe burn the wood. <laughs> so maybe just like that. Try your best to not destroy anything. <laughs> and then basically you're going to take light grape beds and just, you know, there doesn't have to be any specific pattern to this, but if you wish to follow along, here is what I generally laid out. For. That's where I place all the beds. And next, you can just take barrels and chests and just, you know, create storage wherever you deem it, nece or deem it necessary. Take some spruce trap doors to create shelves and put barrel more barrels and chests on top of them. 
and you could also use a lantern in some spots if you really want to. And yeah, this barracks is not quite as filled out with beds as the other one. Actually, this is like five beds. The, other, the, keep, the barracks in the keep had seven beds, but that is, should be sufficient. Then you can move up to the next floor, and really, all the, f the rest of the floors of the donjon, except for the very top floor, is just going to be more storage rooms. Uh, and for the floors that have arrow slits, then they you could probably store them with arrows for the sake of defense. But it's going to be a pretty similar layout on all the floors. Just place sconces on all four walls, and then you know, just fill up the fill out particularly these two walls the back walls with your storage as such the reason why you would want to put the storage on these two back walls is because on the floors where you have arrow slits it'll just be more convenient to have everything stored on these walls so that they're not in the way when you're trying to defend against attackers so you can if you say I had a chest here, you can't really move that way. You can only move this way to get out of the out of line of sight from the arrow loop. As I described before, just haphazardly place barrels and chests in this in, in this area. Doesn't have to be anything in particular. So I'm going to go ahead and finish out building out the rest of the floors of this tower, and I'll meet you guys back up at the very top of the tower to complete the tallest room or the highest room of the tallest tower. Stay tuned. Alrighty, so I've built all the floors throughout the tower, except for this floor right here, because it'll, it'll be just a little bit different. But before we do that, we're going to expand the floor space of the highest room of the tower. And we're going to start by adding some corbeling around the sides. And the corbeling is going to be a little different. I felt just to have a little bit of variation on this tower was going to be a little aesthetically pleasing. So let's see, on these corners we will take polish and sight stairs, place them upside down, and then you can leave them like that. And then for the walls of the donjon, we're going to place an upside down polish and sight stair, one block down at the edge, one up, one down, one up, and one down. And we're going to do that on all sides. I just wanted to give it a little bit something extra on the donjon. I think it looks rather nice. No, we're not going to add matriculations to the this room of the donjon. I felt that it is a bit too high. I mean, they not that they wouldn't be useful, it's just that's not going to be the purpose of the room of this, of this tower. And then what we're going to do is build up an extra four blocks of polished endocyte up from this flushed level of the of the donjon. It will be five blocks if, on these corbels, but only four when you go up from this edge. So I guess I should just say build up five polished endocyte blocks on the lower corbels. Probably would have just made it easier to communicate. <laughs> I apologize, I am a little bit rusty when it comes to instructing. It's been a little over a week since I've made my last video. All right, and on these corners, we're gonna do the same trick as we've done on the corners of the tower before. We're gonna build up three blocks of stone bricks and I'll top them off with polished andesite. And then for these gaps in between these polished andesite pillars, pick one wall. I guess it doesn't really matter which wall it is. Um, and just fill it in with stone bricks. And you're going to have to designate this space as the prison area or the dungeon. Or the, the dungeon. <laughs> um, as this room will serve. And the other uh, gaps, just place stone bricks at the very bottom and the very top. These is, this is where we're going to put in windows. And then we're going to use the same method at least to start with for each for the floor of the of this room. I'm going to fill in this 
spaces with strip spruce logs and spruce slabs. And then since we're not going to go up any higher, we can put some spruce slabs, I think, right there. And that still gives us, no, you have to take that one out. Okay. So from this stair, just these two spruce slabs, and then that's all you can put in so that you can still make your way up and down. Now we can fill in this room of the donjon. So for lighting up this room, we're going to just place a sconce or a torch on just two walls opposite from each other. Then I think, yeah, take a couple of light gray beds. And these are just going to be for the guards that will be up here. Spruce trap doors. I'll place one on the very top right there just to cap off the spruce log. And then create a bit of a railing with the more spruce trap doors. And let's get to finishing up the rest of the different storage and other supplies for the guards, so like a chest there, dark oak stairs for to be, serve as chairs. We're going to create a little, little table right here between them so the guards can sit here. Put a lantern on top. A couple more barrels, a cauldron filled with water just to keep everybody hydrated. Last but certainly not least, we're going to build the dungeon itself. Now if you're just using vanilla Minecraft you can do this with just iron bars and that should be okay. You know you're not gonna be able to get in and out. You could maybe figure out a way to create ways into the prison cells but if you're using supplementaries then it, you can use iron gates which I think is pretty cool. We're going to have two prison cells so we're gonna put a dividing wall right here in the middle which would be I think it's four blocks tall. And then we're going to extend outward. The iron gates will be placed right here. You can make them too high and they'll both open together, which I think is a pretty cool function. And then you can fill out the rest of the prison cell. That's one prison cell done. And then you can take gray carpets and just create little like sleeping mats for the pr prisoners. I feel weird creating a prison here. I'm not sure why, but. <laughs> That will do it. Then we can take gray stained glass panes and just put them inside the windows. And that will do it. Like I said, this room could be a bunch of different things. I decided to turn it into a dungeon as the word donjon would eventually evolve to. But it could also be like, it could be primarily just for military purposes to look out for invaders around you. Or it could be like a very luxurious reading room or not, as, not necessarily a bedroom, because imagine having to climb these stairs every single night and every single morning. I don't think that would be very convenient to have your bedroom up here in this room. But it definitely could be a very nice reading room. Or, as I described earlier, a dungeon. A prison. Because this would be the hardest room to escape from in the castle. Hello there. Of course, uh, a dungeon would be more effective when it's placed underground, like in the foundations of the keep. But in earlier castles, the dungeon was placed into the highest room of the tallest tower. Very cool little known fact about castles, specifically the Great Tower. And next, we'll get onto the roof. Can't believe we're almost done here already. Actually, before we do that, we're going to have to fill out, fix these uh, battlements that we destroyed partially while building the dungeon. Turns out, uh, yeah, I probably didn't listen to my own words. This is not going to reach up all the way here, so we can just put these parts of the battlements back in. I don't think this would actually be useful for anything, so maybe you could just put stone bricks here, but this will oh, it fix what we destroyed from earlier. Now we can get onto the roof of the donjon. Alrighty, now we're on the last step of building the donjon, and it's going to be the roof. And quite honestly, this will probably be the most difficult part to build, especially if you're building up so high. It's going to be a little dangerous too in survival. It's going to be very hard to see all the different details of the donjon since I built it all out of deep slate, deep slate tiles. I'll actually place a screenshot on the video right now showing that donjon over there where I temporarily replaced a section of the roof with a bunch of different colored woods. So you can very clearly see all the different uh, stairs and slabs and blocks on the roof. I will admit this, the roof of the donjon is probably the weakest part of the entire castle but I think it works for now. I'll definitely try to get better at this in the future. I was just trying to use some rusty 
tower roof building skills from years and years ago. <laughs> and I probably messed up a little bit on some details here and there. But let's get started. First, we're going to take deep slate tile slabs. And on we're going to start actually on the the utmost, the highest most block of the wall. And I'm going to place slabs all the way across. And oops. Then what we actually do is just so that these uh, blocks are not just corner to corner, we'll actually add some more slabs in between so that the full length of like this edge of the roof is going to be seven blocks long. And then there'll be two more slabs in, be in the corner in between each length of the roof. I hope that made sense. <laughs> all right, so the next step is to take stairs and we're gonna place stairs all the way along the uh, walls of the, of the tower. There'll be five total on each wall. And then we'll take slabs and place three slabs in between on each corner. And then we'll take full deep slate tile blocks and put the right on these corner walls. So you have something like this. Okay, the next step is actually we're going to take the uh, deep slate tile blocks and place them behind the stairs that we placed down earlier. And we'll place another row of five stairs right on top. And then we can actually place one more block, oop, one more block right here, and then place a slab on top to help start filling in that gap. And then just like below, we'll take place more blocks behind on the back of these stairs. On the back of these rows of stairs. And then from here, we're gonna do something a little different. We're gonna take deep slate tile blocks and just place three blocks right in the middle and then a stair on each side. We're gonna to start to increase the slope of the roof. I'll discuss more about the shape of castle tower roofs in a moment. Then we can place a stair on the center block and then take more deep slate tile blocks and create another row of three blocks on the back side of that of those individual stairs. And then we can take the slabs and fill in those gaps in the corners as such. Then we're gonna take a deep slate tile block, place one in the middle on each side and then place stairs like this. There's a stair on top of each of those blocks we just placed momentarily ago. Place another block on the back end of each of these stairs. And then place a slab in between each of these blocks. Place a block on another block on top. Another stair. And then you can place a block there to fill in that space. Add two more blocks and then add three walls right on top. And that completes the roof of the donjon. Now, what I was going to talk about earlier is the sloping of the roof of castle towers. Uh, they have a unique shape where they are more steep as you get towards the top of the roof, but then they are more shallow at the bottom of the roof. And there are multiple reasons for this. One of which is, and I did not actually replicate this in the actual room of the donjon, but basically the whole weight of the roof is being supported by these outer walls, which are only being supported by these corbels sticking out from the walls. So this is actually a rather dangerous architectural construction. But to help alleviate that, they would actually create builds an inner, either like an inner uh, ring of wall on the inside or just individual uh, pillars to raise up and support the main body of the roof. And thus you would have a difference of sloping slopage to the roof of the castle. I hope that's explained that well enough. <laughs> if I actually built in pillars on the inside of the highest room of the donjon, they would be supporting most of the weight of the roof, but then these walls would be supporting just this sort of outer ring of roof that is shallower. And there you go. That completes the donjon of Castle Caramel. And I'll be right back with you to close this video. And that is it for the donjon. We are now finished building the main structures of Castle Caramel. 
In my next video, I will show y'all what you can put in the bailey of a castle. Be sure to subscribe so you can stay tuned for that video. Please leave a like and comment down below. I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, farewell.